me the reporter who is breaking that story, Greg Miller from the Washington Post. Greg, tell me the story. Have I got the details? Generally, tell me what you know. I think you're. I think you're on the right path there. So yeah. So. Trump, one day after he fires Comey last week, he has this meeting with the Russian foreign minister and the Russian ambassador. And in this discussion, he goes into um, uh, a portion of the conversation deals with this threat coming from the Islamic State. It has to do with laptops on aircraft. And he starts talking about the uh, various aspects of the threat reporting on this, where, you know, how the Islamic State is putting this plan together uh, and what, uh, in what scenarios it might cause the most damage. The trouble is that a lot of this information information comes from an ally, an American partner uh, that is gathering the intelligence on this and providing it in the United States in strictest confidence. And the U.S. didn't have uh, uh, the authorization to share this intel, particularly with Russia. Tell me, as soon as he revealed that information and that meeting ended, um, did any, was there any reaction at the White House? Did they contact the CIA? Did they contact uh, anyone, anyone in, in the intelligence community? I mean, yes, exactly. So, the, so right afterward, the staff appears to realize that this is an overstep. This was a Trump had gone too far, and they were worried. And so, senior members of the National Security Council staff uh, place calls to the CIA director and the director of the National Security Agency, and they do that because they're worried that Trump has revealed something he shouldn't have. And these are the agencies that are most likely dealing most directly with this partner. In other words, they're going to be the ones that are going to have to deal with any blowback if something comes of it. All right. The, the, there was another sort of part of this story from last week. I don't know if the, this was happening during the time that he went off script, uh, according to your reporting. But um, there was a task photographer there. Remember the, remember the U.S. photographers? The American media wasn't there. A White House press pool wasn't there. They were tossed out. But apparently Lavrov had his, quote, personal photographer who snapped a picture, and that ended up in the Russian media. Was he in there for this? We don't know if he was there for the whole meeting or, I mean, he clearly was at the White House. He clearly was in the Oval Office for parts of this because uh, the TASS news agency has posted lots of pictures to prove that. Um, and what the White House has said is they didn't know that this photographer worked for the state-run news agency. They were told it was just an official photographer for the foreign minister, not a news photographer. They didn't expect this. In fact, some White House officials said they were lied to by Russia on this count. All right. Typically, when the president meets with a foreign dignitary, especially someone so important as someone from Russia, is that he is brief. Now, you, in your reporting, it says that he went off script. Um, it was so. This was un unexpected by anybody else that he would do this. Right. This is just Trump being Trump. Yeah, and we talk about in the story how, I mean, this has been a chronic problem. NSC staff produces pages, you know, two to five page. Um, uh, pieces of paper for Trump to prepare him for these kinds of meetings. He has insisted that all of that be boiled down to bullet points that can fit on a single page and often strays from those. So, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, there's a real concern about the lack of discipline here. Is the, according to your reporting, is the intel community distressed? I mean, I really, you know, I realize that, you know, it's disturbing to hear that he would, that he would uh, reveal, he'd, give, he'd reveal information that he has no authority to reveal. It's from a partner ally. But what's the, what's the reaction of the intel community is since that happened and tonight? I mean, I think that there is a lot of concern that, that the handling or mishandling of sensitive information like this is, is a jeopardizes, endangers important relationships. You know, the United States is very powerful spy services. Nevertheless, in places like Syria, relies heavily on partners, on other countries that can get to places the United States can't. And so there's a real um, concern in the intelligence community that failing to protect these kinds of sensitivities makes it harder for spy agencies to do their jobs, makes it harder for them to see threats, to see plots coming. All right. And, and that's sort of the long term or maybe even the short term. I don't know what. But is there any sort of real risk tonight? I know that there's some discussion about laptop, laptops and computers. And, you know, is there, is there any fear tonight that, the, that we're in jeopardy? No, I don't think we're, I mean, our story is not saying that there's some new aspect to this threat that should be any source of alarm to people. It is only that Trump was describing details about this threat to Russian officials in a way that some thought was way out of bounds. Thank you very much, Greg. Thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.